Hello everyone, welcome to the channel for everything Arsenal and welcome to the match build-up and opposition preview for Arsenal's game against Liverpool. Premier League football is back, real football is back. I'm just from watching the likes of Armenia and Romania and I'm, I'm, I'm tired of that, that's kind of, that kind of football. So let's have real football back and I have a special guest with me back on the channel again. It's Nick, how are you? Yeah, all good mate. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on again, it's a pleasure. No problem. Tell them about your channel and uh, where you usually are. Uh, yeah, it's the Copite podcast. So we search the Copite podcast on Twitter um, yeah. or the Copite off on Twitter as well. That's our main account. Then you've got Copite podcast on YouTube and uh, Copite off on Instagram and uh, Facebook as well. Thank you for that. I'll leave his link as the first link in the description and the second link will be the link to my new channel, Everything Football. So subscribe subscribe to both. Check out Liverpool content. I'm sure they'll be previewing the Arsenal game and stuff. So let's do a quick preview on Arsenal and Liverpool. So the first thing I wanted to ask you about is um, about your season so far. So um, I'll have your, your form scrolling down the bottom. So as I can see here, you're currently in seventh place. Um, probably not where you expected to be by now. You're on 46 points. 13 wins, 7 draws, 9 losses, goal scored 48, you've considered 36, and you're currently on a goal difference of 12. The last five games, you've won two and lost three. So from those, what has happened to Liverpool? I know it's injuries. I remember when I talked to you, when I think we played you guys in the third game of the season, you guys are very confident. You're trying to choose between Thiago and Vinaldem. You're talking about <laughs> Van Dijk, Gomez. You're so happy. But since then, you've picked up so many injuries, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been a bit of a nightmare, hasn't it, with with uh, the injuries and whatever, and we've just not been able to adapt. And I think that's just because we us we're usually pretty good with injuries, and we usually have a set eleven for every yeah. game. There's not usually many any changes, and the fact that these changes have been enforced with Van Dijk and then getting injured, then Gomez, and then Matip, and then we've had to bring in emergency centre backs, and we're there just starting to get up to grips. We've won our won our last two, beat Leipzig in the Champions League two 0 and we've beat Wolves away, which is a really good win. Yeah. I was really worried yeah. about that one, but we managed to get the win. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. I think it's it's quite a big game because I mean I think Chelsea play. Do they do they play this weekend? Chelsea, I believe they play against West Brom this weekend. Yeah, so I think if. I mean, hoping for a miracle if West Brom somehow somehow beat beat Chelsea, then yeah. it, uh, it opens it up a little bit. But I think we need to Liverpool need to beat Arsenal to even if we want one yeah. percent glimmer of, of trying to get top four okay. this season. I mean, I know we're still in the Champions League, but we need to try and get get a few points on the board in the league as well, just to try and I mean, because there's what nine games left, is it until yeah. the end of the season? So. It's still a lot of points to play for there, so we, we we just need to keep going. And I think with the little bit of form, like I just touched on there, like the last two games we've won, I think we, if we take that into this and Hotter being back and people like that back in the squads, it can it, it's definitely a better Liverpool than it has been for the majority of the season. Yeah. So for those thirteen wins, what would you say has been your favourite or best results this season from the thirteen wins? Ooh. Let me have a little think about that one. Um, the one that the win that should have been a win was the Everton game where we drew two two and the, the last yeah. the last minute goal got disallowed. That would have been my favourite. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I don't know actually. I don't know because this season's been a bit a bit crazy for, for us. I enjoyed yeah. the Spurs home win where Bobby Firmino got a last minute winner. I really yeah. enjoyed that because um, we had 10,000 fans at Anfield for that game. That was the little period yeah. where we had some fans in, so that was nice. Bobby was going through a hit and miss patch then, and he, he got the winner and played really well. He ran down to the cop and was celebrating, so that one, was, that one sticks out to me as probably the, the best. And obviously the, the Crystal Palace 7-0 as well, where we battered them. And that was yeah. kind of the end of our good form, and then we kind of just dwindled, dwindled from there. Yeah. Like you said, the amount of losses we had, that just isn't hasn't been acceptable for a for a team who wanted to regain the title this year and I think it's just got to choke her off as being one of those seasons and we uh, we have to go again stronger next year. Believe me, you're not the only one who enjoyed that um last minute corner yeah. winner from Firmino against Tottenham. We all enjoyed it. We don't like them that much. So from the nine losses and the eight and um the seven draws, what has been your worst result? Oh performance. Wait. 
Worst performance. Oh, I don't know what the worst performance is, to be honest, Glenn. There's been loads this season. It's not yeah. it's not like Liverpool. The the Man City one yeah. where they beat us 4 1, that really hurt. That really hurt because mm-hmm. it it was a shame because it was one one for quite a long period and then the yeah. mis- the mistakes from Allison, which another thing that we're not used to, Allison making mistakes like that, that kind of gave them the point really because from that point we they just banged in a few more and that really hurt the Leicester defeat as well where we I thought we played quite well for like a half yeah. and then we kind of just capitulated the same as the City game where we get to a level and then we kind of just dropped off because we haven't got those top quality players in, in defence mm-hmm. at the moment but yeah I'd say I'd say between those two and obviously the losing at home to Everton and losing that record from God knows how long. 90, I think the last time they won before this year was yeah. like 90, 99, I think. So it had been a long time. And I think a lot of factors into that. Not having any fans in the stadium um, definitely definitely helped them. Of course it did. Because that they, I don't think if there was any fans in the stadium, that would have ever happened. But the, And then the injuries as well. And then also our yeah. bad form. It just kind of set it up perfectly for them. So I probably would say the Everton one, to be honest, just because that was... Yeah. Obviously, I'm not a lot. I know a lot of a lot of Everton fans, so that was um, a difficult one. I get what you're saying about very many results, like all those three, the Burnley defeat at home, ending your run. I mean, West Brom draw at home. All those are very. Uh, we've been there this season, like losing to Burnley at home and then drawing with a team that is at the bottom. So it's a, uh, it's been a terrible season. It's it's been not an expected season. And then um, so those are your results so far this season. On screen right now, I'll have your next five fixtures. So I can see you have um, Arsenal away from home next and then Villa at home and then Leeds away and then Newcastle at home and then United away. So 15 points available. How many would you be happy with from those 15? Ooh, let's see. Three. I'd be happy with 10 to be honest, three wins, three mm-hmm. wins and a draw. I mean, mm-hmm. I would love to say fifteen, but I just don't think with our our consistency at the moment, I don't think we yeah. we can do that. I mean, we probably get a few draws and the leads leads away, Man United away, Arsenal away. Those three mm-hmm. away games maybe suit us because being at home at the moment doesn't really work for us with with no fans. We don't really have that advantage, that big advantage that we usually have being at home. So I'm looking forward to the away games more than I am the home games because Villa home and Newcastle are home. Any other season, I would be like, right, that's another three points. That's another, not an easy game, but it's a a game where with fans behind us and a a full fit squad, we'll win those. So yeah, I think I think I would be happy with 10, but we need to be getting, maybe maybe 12 needs to be the minimum if we want to have an outside chance of even getting top four this season. Yeah, I think the funny thing is I actually think you'll definitely beat Newcastle and Villa at home, especially if they still don't have Grealish. Um, Obviously, these games come in between very tough games against Real Madrid. And if you go through another tough game, maybe in the semifinals. So it's going to be very interesting to see which kind of players you play in the Champions League and in the league. So maybe rotations. Speaking of players, which kind of lineup would you go for this weekend? Would you take Real Madrid into consideration? Um, I I think I would I, I would after this game. I, I think for this game we've got to go. We've got to go full strength. I mean, I think Firmino's back, but I think he will go. Yeah. I think pretty much the same same as last game with um, Hotter, Salah, and Mane. I think those three together. Maybe he might put Firmino in as well and have have all four. I, yeah. I don't know. Um, but it, it's an option. It's nice to have Bobby back to to have that, those nice. options, but um. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's gonna be um it's it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting game. I can't wait to see to see what he puts in there. But I think with this Arsenal game, we need to go strong. If we if we end up maybe drawing against against Arsenal, then the Aston yeah. Villa game after the Real Madrid game, then you might see a a lesser team maybe to prepare for the second leg of Real Madrid to kind of you'll you'll see maybe Klopp throwing all his eggs in one basket if if we if the league's not going any better than it has yeah. been. And we just kind of think, well, let's just let's just go for the Champions League now because that's our best chance of um, qualifying for the Champions League next year. Yeah, definitely. So, starting lineup wise, um, give me a starting lineup for the game. The eleven players you're going to start with if you're the manager. Um, I'll go Allison in goal. Got Trent at right back, Kabak and Phillips, uh, Robertson, uh, Thiago, Fabinho, Juan Aldum. And then Hotter, Salah, Mane for me. So 
who will be up front as the nine or the false nine? Uh, I think it's, it's usually it's usually hotter when we play those three, and it kind of interchanges. Yeah. Like Mane will go in, and Salah usually stays on the right, and Mane and and Hotter interchange their positions. So I think we'll see Hotter start there, and then maybe Mane drift in as and when depends who's in certain areas when we're defending higher up on the pitch that um but that having those three is good because they're all interchangeable i mean they're all quick they're all direct they're all good on the ball i think bobby bobby is but i think hot has got a bit more pace that he, he can play in all those three positions a bit better than bobby could yeah. so i think it makes us even more unpredictable which is better for us at the moment because we need to have that unpredictability and be able to s- score goals which hotter is 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 really good at and that's what we need to do put the ball in the back of the net at the moment yeah, and what have you made of um, Arsenal's season so far? I remember when you played you guys, I think both teams had won two games out of two. And um, we were looking good. You had won the FA Cup. I think we had just um, beaten you guys, I think, in the Carabao Cup and in the Community Shield and in the last game last season in the league. So we were looking really good. So what have you made of our season? Is it um, Ateta? Is it the players? Who do you blame for Arsenal's poor form? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure. It's a, it's a difficult one because where are you guys? You're ninth in the league, 42 points. So you're... Yeah. You're only four points off Liverpool. <laughs> I mean, it's just one of those seasons. I think having no fans in the stadium affects everyone. I think it, it does affect Arsenal as well. And I mean, you've got some really obviously talented players. Arteta is a great manager. It just, I think you yeah. just need to, you just needs to be given time. I mean, Bamiang wasn't a Bamiang um, left out for disciplinary issues in the in, in the last game yeah. or something like that. So the having stuff like that, now. yeah. Yeah, I think having stuff like that is isn't good, especially when he's your main guy, like your main threat, your main goal scorer. Everything yeah. does go through him, and when he's firing and scoring, you usually win games because he is that good when he's on top form. So not having yeah. him in the, maybe the right right uh, frame mentally does affect you. And like 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 I've said with us with no Van Dijk and no Gomez and whatever. That has a big bear on us, and I think it's the same with Arsenal with Abamyang. So, if Abamyang's if I see if I see Arsenal's lineup um, and I see Abamyang there, then I'm going to be more worried than I than I would be if he's not there. But I think he just needs to give Arteta time. I think there's no point chopping and changing. He's he's obviously a very talented manager. You've got some good players. I just think you need to kind of ride this the wave of just not. Of just playing well and then not playing well, I think it comes with time. And if you stick with yeah. with this fella and it doesn't end up working in a couple of years, then you can go right. Let's cut our losses, get someone new in, fresh ideas, and we start again. But I don't think I'm, I'm I don't like when clubs change often. Like Chelsea have done it with Lampard, gave him help mm-hmm. not very long, and now they've got two in. And it's just I, I prefer you just give play give someone time to kind of get a philosophy going and, and and see how it goes and if it doesn't work out after yeah. a couple two or three years then you make the decision but I think Arteta is he's good enough he was a good enough player and he's got he's obviously like we, you see when you see Pep Guardiola talking about him he's always complimentary about his tactics and whatever else so it's just about implementing that into the the best league in the world and it's going to be it's obviously good, very difficult to do so I hope you do give him time because you, you always want to see former players um in management position so you I, I do want to see him stay yeah so last two questions the first one is there's a time I think Salah was subbed off when you were losing one of the home games and fans were really disappointed about Salah getting subbed off and people were asking for money to be subbed off instead because he wasn't in good form. Alison, as he said, he does look good with the fresh moustache, um, looking like the godfather, <laughs> looking pretty good. So Klopp as well. There's a time I had some Liverpool fans saying he should be sacked. So what have you made of all that? Uh, funny enough, Salah is still the top scorer in the league despite missing so many chances. Uh, yes, yeah, Sal, it's, it's weird because... There's a, there's always been this thing with Liverpool fans about who would you sell if you had to Mane or Salah, and I'm just like I don't want to get involved in it because why can't we just? It's like the Ronaldo Messi thing. You just what you. It's just the this generation where you just want to pick one who's the best, and I think it's the same with Salah and Mane in a way. Like I've written about him for us as well right now. Yeah, and I, th- I think you're just getting into this mental competition where you're thinking who's better and who's going to leave next because they're all like Salah, Mane, and Firmino are all getting up to thirty now, so it's. I mean, that's why Hot has been brought in to kind of maybe take the place of one of them. But yeah, Salah for me, like top goal scorer, he's he's our penalty taker as well. He's he do, everything mostly all the good things that come through our play is is eighty percent from him and and his work ethic. He, he is he is that good, and I would be 
absolutely devastated if if, if he did leave. For, I mean, I've seen a few yeah. r- rumors about Real Madrid and whatever else, which is just I don't think there's anything in those. I just think it's Marca, the Spanish newspaper, trying to make something a bit more sensationalized yeah. than it is as usual. So um, yeah. no, I'd, I'd I'd be devastated if Salah went, and I think he's. He, he's he's he, he he can go through up and down, um, up and downs and in form just like anyone else. I mean, you just need to accept that. But the amount of goals he scored for us over the last couple of years is just ridiculous. So, and even if he does leave in the, in the next year or two, he'll be definitely go down as a Liverpool legend because he's he has been that good for us. We definitely do agree. And on Klopp, uh, what if if I think Klopp will leave? Do you are you one of the fans who say that we should leave? <laughs> oh, definitely not. Definitely, not definitely yet. not. I don't. I don't understand. I think this is just a Twitter thing. Honestly, it's just it's the clop out and FSG out. Just I, I, yeah. I think it's just the, people of a certain age who haven't seen Liverpool really bad. Like when we were, had Roy Hodgson in charge and we were near the bottom of the league. And yeah, yeah, just yeah, just stuff like that. Where you just you need to have a bit of perspective, like clops. If Klopp can stay, I think his contract's till twenty twenty four. So we've got we've got another three years of Jurgen Klopp, and if we get that plus more, we need to take it as a privilege because he has brought us the Premier League after thirty years, and we won a Champions League as well. And we we yeah. with a bit of luck, we could go as quite as far as that this year in the Champions League if we if we play quite well. Yeah. So he he will or not like I said with salary, Jurgen Klopp legacy will <laughs> is. I don't even have to mention how how big it is because he, he is that 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 guy that brought the league to us after yeah. after thirty years. So he'll go down in in folklore for that. Yeah, you won the Super Cup as well. Won the Club World Cup. Could yeah. have won against Real Madrid another Champions League. Could have yeah. had a Europa League if he beat uh, Sevilla. So you've had a lot of um, good results. Yeah. So prediction time. I think this is the game that has had the most goals in Premier League history. So what's your prediction for the game? Um, I keep. I think every time I get asked the pr- prediction now, I just say two one to Liverpool and just pray that it's going to be two one to Liverpool, but it never is. Yeah. So I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna go two one again. I mean, it, it depends if a Bamiyang starts. If a Bamiyang starts, mm. yeah, I fancy him to score, but I, I do think that I'm hoping that with Hotter back and uh, Fabinho back as well, which I haven't mentioned, Fabinho coming back into midfield, especially he's made a huge difference. Yeah. So. Having those two back fit and back in the team is huge. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with two one. I think. I think his battle with Pato will be very interesting. So my prediction is two two. I can see another draw. Usually you guys smash at, at Anfield, but usually it's a draw at the Emirates. So let's see yeah. how it works out this time. So going to go for a two two and probably Salah and Mane to score. Probably your bombing and Lacazette like, to score. So thank you, Mick, for coming on. I'll leave uh, Mick some links to, uh, to his channel and to his Twitter in the description. Thank you for watching. Keep staying safe, and I'll catch up with you guys later.